Welcome back to another episode on the Start This Business YouTube channel. This is the My Rental Car Journey mini series. And today we are talking about my pre inspection process. So, if you want to learn how to protect your assets at all times and also to make sure that you're not paying any additional expenses in case something does happen, make sure you stay tuned because after the intro, we're going to dive right into it. Let's get it. Back hustlers and without further ado this is my check in and out form that i use for every single renter that comes and rents one of my cars every single time someone comes and rents my car this is the form that i use uh, once again we're going to jump right into it because it's very self-explanatory it's very easy um i know people look at stuff and like paper and things that they have to fill out and you know it looks like a whole bunch of work and especially when you see a whole bunch of text, it looks like a whole, a lot, but it's really not. Um, a lot of it's self-explanatory. It, it, it really takes like two minutes to fill out. So, and at the end of the day, it can save you thousands, thousands, hundreds, but more importantly, thousands of dollars. So make sure you check this form out. Let's get right into it. So for the inspector's name, that person is going to be you. Um, of course, you are the person that's going to be checking the cars. Um, now, granted, once you upscale your business or, or scale your business up and you do expand your business, you're gonna have other people doing these things for you. So the inspector's name is gonna eventually be the person because we are going to manifest success in this business for everybody watching this channel who wants to start one, including mine, that one day that person's not gonna be us. So yeah, whoever it is that's actually doing the check-in process, that's gonna be the inspector name. But again, just for the purpose of this video, right now that person is me. Um, date, time, again, as long as you can tell what date it is and time it is, you know exactly what to put there. Um, for the reservation details, the guest name is always going to be the person renting your car. Um, whoever's name is attached to the account and is the primary person, that is who you're going to want to put as guest name. You know, sometimes there are added drivers to it. So if you do have added drivers on it, then you can put them, you know, you can put them on there. But most importantly, it is who is paying and is who is officially booking the car is who I'm going to put for the guest name. Car name, um, Nissan Versa. That's what I put. Or I just put Versa. Now, I can see in a situation now if I get more than one of the same car. So let's say, for example, I go buy two more Versas. Um, in this situation, I would just put Versa 1, Versa 2, Versa 3. Once again, I'm not going to try to overcomplicate things. I'm just going to fill it out just so that for my personal records, I know what car it is. Cause that's, again, that's kind of what you, what that is for. You really, really just want to get an idea for your own personal records. Reservation days, um, however long they're taking your car out for. So if they're taking it out for three days, then that's what you can put for reservation days. Check-in date, whatever date they originally um, booked the car for, that is the check-in date that you want to want to put. Same with the check-in time, whatever time they actually book it or what time they book, that is going to be the time that you're going to put for check-in time. So again, if you are following so far, these things are very basic, very simple questions that you're answering and, and filling out. So again, when you think about doing this every time, it's still, it's not a lot of work. Um, check out mileage, whatever your mileage is at, when they come and get the car, that is what you're going to put for checkout mileage. Same with the gas out level, the gas out level. Um, for me, I keep it at F every single time now there are some times where i don't have a chance to take it to the gas station and fill it up before my next runner comes against the car so you know whatever that situation is I'll, i usually round it down like i'm not gonna round up i'm gonna round it down to get my to get my user especially if i don't get a chance to fill up the car then i kind of look at it like i messed up a little bit so i'm gonna round it down i'm not gonna round it up so i just said hey as long as it's you know around this area they will be fine when you get the car back now if that thing is on f I expect my car to come back on F. Um, check-in mileage and check-in level or check-in gas level. When you get the car back, again, this is a pre and post inspection form. So when you do get the car back, you are gonna go back and fill some of these things out. So the check-in mileage and check-in gas level is what it is when it comes back. Um, and obviously this is not just for you know protection, but this is just you know, a good idea too. You can go back and use data and see like how you know how many miles your car or, or people are using your car or just keep a record because you may have repeat renters and you want to get an idea of okay last time they had my car this is about how long they're taking it for or how many miles they're driving it's just you know good uh, numbers for you to kind of crunch and use for your personal use so um again it's not just going to be for protection the client verification all this is actually done through turo um this is really just checking the box i mean again 
the val you can't even officially check in the Toro anyway. You can't check in a renter without verifying their valid driver's license. Like that's one of the steps that you have to hit, uh, you have to complete before you can complete a check-in process. So that's something you already have to do anyway. Um, and the other three things are something that Toro does on their end just to verify a driver. So these things, you know, should never be unchecked. I mean, obviously if any one of these things are unchecked, then you probably shouldn't run out to that person. So um, just moving on to the next part, which is the most important part before every single rental. It's a pre-inspection process. You know, just like if you rent from a major company, you do the walk, they do the same thing every single time. You are not driving off in that car unless you do a walk-in process with one of the agents that work there that's verifying, pretty much saying, hey, this is what the car looks like before you get it, and this is how we expect it to come back to us. This is the same thing. This is where you're giving your renter the opportunity to write down and know anything that they see pre-inspection that's not already on here. Now, I'm not trying to get over on anybody, so I'm always marking things that are all that I know that's already wrong with the car. So, for example, uh, I have a I have like a noticeably like medium-sized scuff on one of the headlights. So, from sorry, right here at headlights, I'm putting scuff on headlights. Put it, and I also take a picture of it as well too. Um, you know, just like anything, if you have any scratches or any noticeable marks on one of these parts of the car, I would just note it. But again, you're also allowing your renter to go around, walk around the same. They may find something that you may not see, um, but because it, they noticed it before you did, they're putting it on the paper and just covering themselves too. So it's always good when you're doing this process to make sure that they understand you're protect this is for both of us like we're protecting both ourselves because there are things that you may miss um especially if your car is moving in and out like that you may not have a chance to do an inspection every single time or notice every single little mark that happens on the car so a renter might bring it back and you may automatically assume it's them so you know that's again why this pre-inspection process to me is very important to all the parties involved not just you um as the host but also the renters as well um, so again, you just can go through this process. I allow them, I put the clipboard with the form in their hand. I'm not touching the form. I fill some of the top stuff out and all the information and car details. But when it comes to an inspection process, I hand them the form. I do the walk around with them. I point out anything on my end that I already know, like the headlights um, or anything else that may occur. Um, for example, when I had the accident, you know, obviously I put on the front bumper right here, car was in an accident, in pictures, all currently in playing process, etc. So, you know, again, I cover myself, but once again, if they had anything that they would put, that's what they're going to do. If they decide not to put anything, if they do the walk around and outside of what I have on there, if they don't put anything on there, I'm assuming my car is the way it is on this form and everything is good. So if it comes back to me, and anything else is different then yes. Now we're going to have, you know, we're going to have to talk about what, what happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because this wasn't here before I, I left it out to you. So, you know, what's going on? So, again, that's what this form is for. Very simple process. Like, it doesn't take a long. Again, you know, I've had someone say, like, oh, I've never seen someone do this before. But at the same time, I've never had any, like, negative feedback on it. No complaints. Um, and, again, I position it with them knowing this is for both of our protection because, you know, there are hosts out there that, you know, they're trying to capitalize. They will take advantage. They may, they have some damage on their car and they're hoping that you may not notice it. So when you bring it back to them, they're going to drop the claim on you. Um, and as long as they have something like this, a form in place, you are good. There's no way anybody can kind of get around this or any renter that can get around this because as long as these things are in place, and you know most importantly this too this is this is one thing that's important too now people are probably looking and figuring out what this is why am i holding this what is it exactly this is my tire tread reader um tire tread is very 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 important because it's almost like a little hoop loophole that renters can use by saying the tread on your tires is bad and if it is and there's no proof showing that it was good Turo is basically on the side with them and no matter what happens, I mean, they can total your car out and wreck your car. And if they say that and you have no proof covering yourself, tour is going to fall, is going to side with them. So that's why I say your pre-inspection process is, is key to everything that you do. Protect your assets, protect your investments. So every single rental, anytime someone rents my car, I am walking around with this, which is an electric 
tire tread monitor and I'm sticking it in. You'll see in the videos, as a matter of fact, drop the video in this as well. And you guys will see, like you just walking around, stick the tire in and it comes back, reach your tire, let you know if you need to change it or exactly where your tread is at. If it's low, if it's not, um, you know, this other, you can do the penny trick. There's a lot of different things that you can use, but at the end of the day, make sure you document it and you put it in the photos because what happens is before you let the car out, you also have the opportunity to, you know, take photos, take tons of photos. Like there's no reason why there's probably should be less than 30 photos on it on every single rental. Every single rental is going out. There's at least 30 photos. I'm taking photos of every corner of the car, obviously every part of the interior, any pre existing damages. Um, you know, just every little corner of the car because you never know. I'm pick taking a picture of the tire tread. I'm taking a picture of my monitor. I'm taking a picture of me testing that. Um, like just every single thing taking a picture of the gas taking a picture of the mileage taking a picture of my, my car to make sure they know that there's no check engine lights on anything that it goes out to them um, you know just anything that you can think of again you want to document your process because this is your protecting yourself so um, again make sure you take pictures of all that stuff so that's basically it I just wanted to kind of run through a quick one with you guys um because I was getting a lot of questions on basically like how are you able to protect yourself what happens if someone wrecks your car or gets into an accident like how do you make sure that they don't go and say something else and you know it's not your word versus their word and this is how you know what I mean this is how so make sure you guys take it like, if you want this form drop a message in the comments and I will email you this form directly that you can use um, or you can just pause the video and just create your own form, something like this. You don't have to use this exact form. You can use something like it um, at the end of the day because you can probably take out this client verification process out. You really don't need that. Um, so if you do create your own form, like this is something I can see anybody kind of taking out of this part. But um, but yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it. So save it, document it. I hope this helps. Um, I hope this answers a lot of questions for people who are really wondering what happens when I get in an accident and how do you protect yourself from having to pay any additional expenses because I'm telling you guys, if you don't protect yourself or if you forget to do this, matter of fact, if you forget to do this, like, there might be times where you're like, eh, nothing's going to happen. I don't have to do it. That's going to be the time something happens. I'm going to tell you that right now. So that's why I say make sure you do it every single time. If you can't do this, then you should one, probably not be in this business right now, or two, you're in a stage where you should probably be hiring somebody to do it for you. But every single time a car goes out, you want to do this, um, cause I'm telling you that's gonna be time something to happen. So once again, I hope this was able to deliver some value to you guys. Um, even if you don't personally, make sure you just share it to somebody that does so we can all get some of this game, all right? Appreciate everybody, appreciate the love and the support that we've been getting thus far. We're gonna continue rocking out and I'll see you on the next video. Stay tuned, peace. All right, welcome back, man. Once again, shout out to Carbon Cleft for the dope intro theme, for the dope theme. All right, beautiful people, we are back, and here's my, I needed something else to say, I can't say it. Once you get bigger in that in this, in this industry, obviously that person is probably gonna be someone else, not you doing it every single time. Oh, man, Ring Central, man, I'm trying to tell you, like, it seems like every time I record, Ring Central is me, I do right time, man. Damn.